in this scene, Jess is trying to, I guess, meddle in Cece and Nick's love life, but not really knowing that, you know, Cece's not interested in Nick. And also, um, Nick doesn't know that Jess is like talking about Cece in, in a, like a love interest kind of way. And he thinks that Jess is talking about the popcorn machine that Cece is trying to sell to him. And so there's a little bit of wires crossing here. And this is how the scene goes. You know, he's great. Cece. One of our finest, lovely woman. And she has so much to offer. Is this what this is about? She sends you to sell me on Nick? No, Nick. She doesn't know I'm talking to you at all. Wait, you guys have talked about it? All the time. But I thought she and I had come to a decision. Which is? It's not happening. Well, why not? Because I'm not interested. And I know it's not cool to say, but I don't like the way it will look. People are going to say what they're going to say. They're not reasons not to go through with it. Fine. You want to know my biggest concern? My biggest concern is the smell. The smell? The smell of it, yeah. And it's not Cece's fault. I mean, they all smell, and I've told her about it. Hey, you know who's great? Cece. Yeah. One of our finest. Lovely woman. And she has so much to offer. Is that what this is about? She sends you to sell me on it. No, Nick, we haven't talked about this at all. Wait, you guys have talked about this? All the time. And I thought she and I had made a decision. Which is? It's not happening. Well, why not? Because I'm not interested. I know this is not cool to say, but I just don't like the way it will look. People are going to say what they're going to say. They're not reasons not to go through with it. Fine. You want to know my biggest concern? My biggest concern is the smell. The smell? Yes, the smell of it. And it's not Cece's fault. I mean, they all smell. And I've told her that. You told Cece you think all women smell like we whoa, have. Wait, 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 wait. Don't make this a feminist thing. I'm not making this a feminist thing. How? They smell terrible. It's common knowledge. I thought your biggest concern would be how it affected the people around you. I mean, sure. I guess a bunch of old drunks will want to grab at it. But if your biggest concern is the smell, I'm sure that's highly manageable. I guess the special solvents and soaps. But... I haven't really read much on it, you know, but you really have to get in there and scrub it out. It's disgusting, you know, because of all the daily wear and tear. Oh, oil and grease just cooking in there. It's enough to make a man far thinking about it. I mean, they get really hot. Um, I know what temperature they get. But if I'm being honest with you, and I haven't told Cece this, but I do have good memories associated with the spell. Ball games, circus, hanging with my dad. Listen here, you idiot. I've known Cece a very long time, and I can promise you that the smell will not be a problem. Well, that's easy for you to say because you're not the one who's to remind her to clean it all the time. I promise you that if the smell becomes a problem, I will remind her. Well, 
if you remind her and she doesn't do it, I don't want you sneaking around and cleaning it for her. Nick, I'm a good friend, but I am not that good of a friend. All right, whatever you say. Hey, don't tell Cece that we talked. She doesn't want to get involved. Of course she does. But she didn't think you were into the idea, okay? She really values your opinion. Well, what if you two had a real talk? You know, just the two of you outside the bar. Fine. We'll talk. Just the two of us outside the bar. I'm proud of you, Nick. Just make sure, though, she comes and makes her case about facts and figures. And no more of this, oh, come on, Nick. It's gonna taste so yummy, crap. Hi. I came up to talk to you about the other night. But then I saw the paper. And well, actually, I'm kind of embarrassed about it. But since it concerns you, I thought I ought to bring it up in person. What? What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the earplugs. Well, I can't go through the whole thing again. It's sufficient to say, come to make up. And as an added inducement, I have all kinds of news. Can I come in? I guess so. Um, just a minute. Do I have my nightgown on? No, I don't. Would you mind turning around for a second? On a second thought, never mind. This is such a corny line anyway. I'll turn around myself. Come in. Have you seen the paper? Rusty, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know all about it. Certainly had him pegged wrong, didn't I? Hi. Come to talk to you about the other night. And I saw the paper. Well, actually, I'm kind of embarrassed about it. But since it concerns you, I thought I ought to bring it up in person. What? What? Oh, the earplugs. Well, I can't go through the whole thing again. Sufficient to say I've come to make up. It's an added inducement of all kinds of use. Can I come in? I guess so. Wait a minute. Do I have my nightgown on? I don't. Would you mind turning around for a second? On second thought, never mind. It's just a corny line anyway. I'll turn around myself. Come in. Have you seen the paper? Oh, Rusty, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know all about it. I had him picked wrong, didn't I? You mean you really thought he was a great guy? I thought he was a rat. But he was a super rat all along. A super rat in rat's clothing. And you don't know even the best part. Not only he was a rat, but he was also broke. Broke? Broke, I mean, but not even a farthing. His family has money, of course, but he personally broke. Turns out he owes $700,000. Can you imagine owing $700,000? I mean, $43, yeah. 
anyway, that's why he married the queen of the pig people. <laughs> Ollie, don't worry about it. He's just marrying her for money. I'll tell you one thing, Fred, darling. I would marry you for your money in a minute. Would you marry me for my money? In a minute. Well, it's pretty lucky that none of us is rich, hmm? Yeah. Fred, darling, I'm so glad to see you. So, what have you been doing? Writing mostly. Sold a story. Just got word this morning. <laughs> That's marvelous. It really is. But how does your decorator friend feel about this? I thought you were like saving yourself and all that. You know something? I haven't quite gotten around to telling her about it yet. Look, why don't we go for a drink or a walk to celebrate? All right, um, there's some champagne in the fridge. Why don't you get it? And while I'll get dressed. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know something? I don't think I've had champagne before breakfast before. With breakfast on plenty of occasions, but never before before. Well. I have a wonderful idea. We'll spend the day doing things we've never done before. And we'll take turns for something you've never done. And then me. Of course, I can think of anything I've never done before. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Holly. <laughs> You want me to move? Not anymore. What's up? I don't have time to talk. But you haven't heard what I was going to say. See? Now we've already talked more than I wanted to. Well, I did give you my seat. I think that gets me one question. Listen, diner guy. Sean. Sean, I'm flattered, really. Very often, I am happy to meet new people, but today, right now, right here, I can't talk. I understand. I do. So, what if I do the talking for both of us? Um, hey, excuse me. You're on my seat. Am I? Yes. Yes, you are. Are you one of those weirdo compulsive who have to visit the same restaurant, then sit in the same chair, and then eat the same food every day? No. Um, <clears throat> see, what happened was I got up to go get a paper. I was sitting here three minutes ago. Um, I, I ordered a juice, and uh, oh, look, even made a crawling snake out of my straw wrapper. You can finish it if you feel you're up for the job. I'm sorry. Did you want me to move? No, not anymore. What's up? I don't have time to talk. Oh, but you haven't heard what I was going to say. See? Now we've talked more than I wanted to. Mm. Well, I did give you my seat. I think that gets me one question. Listen, diner guy. Sean. Sean? I'm flattered, really. And very often, I'm happy to meet new people. But today, right here, right now, I cannot talk. Hmm. I understand. What if I do the talking for both of us? Have at it. Do you mind if I just read my paper and stare aimlessly out the window whilst you two talk? Not at all. Can I get a name to work with? 
Juliet. It's very nice to meet you, Juliet. Oh, it's so nice to meet you too, Sean. I'm sorry about your seat. Lunch is on me. So what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I do a little bit of everything. Wow, that sounds interesting and maybe even dangerous. Oh my gosh, I love your jacket. Okay, can I stop you here? First off, in your portrayal of me, I sound like I'm in the eighth grade. Oh, well, in my portrayal of you, you only have an eighth grade education. <laughs> okay, all right, so we'll smarten you up a little bit. College, probably top your class, graduated early. Okay. I'm, I'm new to town. I don't know too many people. I do know my cats, though. The gray one is very affectionate, but the white one makes me work much harder for the attention. Oh, what about your family? My family's amazing. My parents have been together for, what is it, 30 years now? Okay, do we know each other? Yes. <laughs> You're the girl who stole my seat. Mm, okay. You are a cop. I'm not a cop. The paper, the vantage point. You, you got all defensive when Scary Guy walked in. You're totally a cop. Okay, Sean, I may mm -hmm. need you to pay me a favor. Name it. Duck. First time pulling your gun? Maybe. Okay. From Wedding Crashers, it's where um, John Beckwith goes and meets Chaz, who is kind of the founder of the whole philosophy of crashing weddings. So. Um, my best friend, Jeremy, who I always crash weddings with is actually getting married and I'm very jaded with love right now. So I'm trying to see who Chaz actually is and try and become his wingman so that we can continue crashing weddings now that I don't believe in love anymore. And this is when we first meet. Chaz? What the fuck do you want? I'm John Beckwith, I'm Jeremy Gray's friend. Huh. God damn it, why did you say so? Come here, brother. Give me a hug, bring it up for the real thing. Have a seat, yeah. God damn you. I almost nunchucked you. Ouch. Yeah. I realize. Yeah, so, uh, so that, is this your place? No. No, no, I live with my mom. Oh. Yeah, you hungry? Hey, Ma! Can we get some meatloaf? No, Chaz, I Ma! actually had a, I had a bite on the way over, so thank you. You sure? Yeah. So, uh, how's my protege? Uh, Jeremy? Boy, he, uh... Yeah, J-Bone. Jay Bone, he uh, he's actually getting married. What? Yeah. What an idiot. What a loser. Good, good. More for me and you. Chaz? Yeah, what the fuck do you want, huh? Oh, uh, I'm John Beckwith. I'm friends with Jeremy Gray. <laughs> oh my god. Why did you say anything? Come here, give me a hug, brother. Bring it in for the real thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I almost killed you. You don't even realize. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. Is, is this your place? <laughs> no, 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 no. I live with my mom. <laughs> oh, hey, 
You want some meatloaf? Hey, Mom, yeah. can we get some meatloaf? Chaz, no. I uh, I had a bite on the way over, so I'm good. Oh. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, how's my protege doing, huh? Jeremy? Uh, boy, he's... Uh, J-Bone. J-Bone? He's, um, believe it or not, he's actually getting married. What? Yeah. Oh, what an idiot! What a loser! Good, good. More for me and you, huh? Yeah, more for uh. Yeah. I gotta go. Okay, baby. Yeah, you do what you have to. Okay. Thanks, Chaz. You're incredible. Call me, please. Oh, baby, stay strong. Okay. I'm just living the dream, man. Look at that's unbelievable. You just, I gotta be honest. I come over here and I'm like, I'm trying to catch my bearings and you got cartoons on the television and your mom, but you still got it. She's hot. You're just living the dream. I love that. You know what? I will have some meatloaf. Let's have some meatloaf. You want some? I knew you would. The meatloaf. Oh. We want it now. God, what is she doing back there? I never know what she's doing back there. <laughs> Just living the dream. I love that. <laughs> she is hot. Where did you pick her up? I got her yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. I just rode my bike to a funeral down the road. Her boyfriend just died. You met her at a funeral? Yeah. I'll throw a wedding in every now and again, but funerals, funerals are insane. The chicks are so horny. It's like, it's like fishing with dynamite. Horny? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy horny. Just, I guess I never assumed a funeral would be a good place to pick up women. Yeah, grief is nature's most powerful aphrodisiac, John. You should look it up. I guess I didn't know that. Well, that's what I've learned anyways. Hey, Ma! The meatloaf! Fuck! Hey, Saturday. We've got one Saturday, and you're coming with. Look, Chaz, I'm sorry, I... I don't mean the judge because you're like an innovator, but there's no way I'm ready for that. I'm ready to shoot. Well, I'm not. What? I'm not going to tell you again, Jack. Get out of here. What? Get off of my side. Get out of my house. You what? Leave. No. You don't want to do this. Oh, come on. The state you're in, Dirk. What do you mean state? State? State of California? I know. Yes, I know what state I'm in. Jesus Christ. What are you? Jack. Jack. Hey, Jack. Listen, you are high and you need to sleep it off all right you've been up for two days i've not been up for two days whatever you're high and you need to come down sleep it off dirk you don't tell me anything get the fuck out of here you're not the boss of me yes i am you're the king huh jesus christ move get out go i don't i don't need this now no no i, I want to shoot the scene i'm i'm i want to shoot the scene i'm ready to shoot the scene i'm fine no get out of here i don't want you here Check. Ready to shoot. All right, we need 20 minutes. No, I'm ready now. It's got to be now. 20 minutes. Fuck, hey, no, check. Check. Look, my cock is ready. I want to, I want to fuck. Let's go. Oh, okay, yeah, let me go try it. No, I can't. All right? You get me? You, you trying to start something here with me, Dirk? I want to start. 
fucking. So who's it gonna be? Oh, okay, all right. Listen to me. You need to settle down, all right? So just go inside, get yourself a drink, and all this off, all right? You understand me? I said I'm ready to shoot. Okay, well, I'm not. I'm not gonna tell you again, Jack. Get out of here. What? 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 Get off my set. Get out of my house. Why? 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 What? What? What are you, what are you talking about? Why? Leave. What? No. Uh, okay, oh, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this, Dirk. I mean, look at you. The state you're in right now. I'm sorry. State? State? What? What do you mean, state? State of California. I know where the fuck I am, Jack. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jack, 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 Jack. Okay, hey, 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 come on, come on. Let's... Okay, listen to me, listen to me, all right? You're high and you need to sleep it off, all right? You've been up for two days. No, I haven't been up for two days. Whatever, you're high and you need to bring it down, all right? So just sleep it off, Dirk, that's it. No, you don't tell me anything. Get the fuck out of here, then. You're not the boss of me. Yes, I am. Oh, you're the king, huh? Oh. Huh? Get the fuck out of here. Go. No, I, I don't need this. I don't, I don't need I, I want, this. I want right. to shoot the scene. I'm ready to shoot the scene. I'm fine. Okay? okay? I don't want you here. I don't want you here. Look, my cock is ready. I want to fuck. Let's go. You listen to me now, kid. Oh, don't you dare call me a kid. I will fuck you up. You want to see me kick some ass? You want to see me kick some ass? I will beat you, Jack. Come on. What the fuck are you doing? Look, I am the biggest star here. That's the way it is. I want to fuck, and it's my big dick, so everybody get ready right fucking now! Not anymore. Oh, what do you mean, not anymore? Your dick. Oh, what? Say it. Say it. Okay, I will then. I've seen you push the hole, you know, 13 inches and all. But you'd be really goddamn lucky today if you could manage the tiny little six. Oh, fuck you. It's all the coke you got in you. You're not ready to fuck. Your dick's just not gonna get hard today, kid. Don't you dare talk to me like that, Jack. All right. How's this set? You're fired, all right? You don't want to listen to me? You're fired. Now get out of my set. Get out of here. What, what is that? What, what is that? Just leave, Dirk. That's it. Just leave. No, my cock is ready. I... You want to see it? Huh? You want to see my big fucking cock? You, you know what? Fuck this. I don't need this. Fuck you! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck all of you! You're not my bosses! No one is the king of me! I am the king of Dirk! And you're nothing without me, Jack. Fucking nothing! Fuck you! is from uh, Philadelphia. I will be playing Miguel. Uh, Frank will be playing Andrew. Uh, the scene is basically uh, Andrew doesn't want to take his uh, AIDS treatment. So I guess I'm trying to convince him otherwise. It's not going through. We'll have to flush it again. Hold still. Shit. The goddamn veins clotted. We have to go to the goddamn hospital so they could change the goddamn Carter. I have too much work to do. Skip the treatment. We're not skipping this treatment. I said skip it, Michael. It's my treatment. Fuck you. Fuck you. This shit's probably not doing me any good anyway. That shit's saving your life, you asshole. What's wrong with you? Close the, close the law book. I'm not going to close the law book. Close the fucking law book. All right. It's closed. <laughs> Fuck. The least you could do is look at me when I'm sticking this shit into your arm. Forget the fucking case. One hour of your day and give me a little of your time. You don't think there's much time left, do you? That's not what I said. You're scared. You think we're near the end. No. It's not going through. We'll just have to flush it again. Ah, 
Hold still. Shit. The goddamn veins caught it. We have to go to the goddamn hospital so we can change the goddamn catheter. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hospital? I have way too much work for that. You know what? Let's just skip the, the let's just skip the uh, the treatment for tonight. It's fine. We're not skipping this treatment. Um, it's my treatment, Miguel. I said skip it. It's fine. Fuck you! Fuck you! This shit's probably not doing me any good anyways. That shit is saving your life, you asshole. What's wrong with you? Close the law book. I'm not gonna close the law book. Close the fucking you. law book. What? It's closed. Jesus Christ. The least you could do is look at me. Why am I sticking this shit into your arm? Forget the fucking case. Just an hour a day. Give me a little bit of your time. You don't think that there's that much time left, do you? I didn't say that. No, you're scared. You think that we're near the end. No. Or maybe I should start making plans. Is that what you think, Miguel? That I should start planning my memorial service? Oh, begin to prepare for the inevitable, Andrew. Maybe you should think about it. What does that mean? Maybe you should think about it. I'm not going to die. That's right. We're on the positive plan. You don't have a fatal disease. You have a manageable illness. Well, well, what do you expect me to do, Miguel? Give up? Let this thing turn us into victims? Then what are we, Drew? The winners? Ladies and gentlemen, the first prize of AIDS goes to Andrew Beckett and his lover, Miguel. Excuse me? I'm not your lover. I'm your care partner. Fuck. I'm ready to die. You think I'm ready for it? I fucking hate this. I'm not a murderer. I hate every goddamn part of this. Don't leave me, please. I love you so much. Don't die. Don't leave me, please. I've just been so scared. I've been so fucking incredibly fucking scared. There's only one thing that we can do. We have to have a party. We have to.